Should you take a DWI field sobriety test? Today, that's what we're going to talk about here at the Full Gym Law Firm on our YouTube channel. I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. I'm Jeff Hampton with the Full Gym Law Firm. And today I want to talk about an area that comes up all the time in drug investigations and drug crime defense, and that is the use of drug dogs. Is it legal? Is it constitutional? When does it cross over the line? So by the way, if you wait around to the end of this video, we'll also give you a free ebook what to do if you've been charged with a drug crime in Texas. All right, let's get to the important part. Now, under the law, the Fourth Amendment clearly states that every person, you have a right if you're a United States citizen here in the United States, you are to be protected from unlawful search and seizure. So as part of that, this extends not only to your person, but your property, your home, your vehicle. And so the law says it's gotta be, there's gotta be a good reason why the police decide to do a search of you uh, before they just jump into doing it, all right? Now, where do police dogs fit in? I mean, everyone's seen them. You go to the airport, every time you go through TSA, you, TSA, a lot of times you go through there, you'll find them there sniffing through. Music festivals, other areas, I mean, there's just randomly, you'll have officers there that'll be holding a dog. And many times they're there ready to be a part of the process to try to find illegal drugs. So are the dogs being there by themselves, just being present, are they violating your Fourth Amendment rights? Well, no, not necessarily. Just being there, just having the dog present, specifically at the airport, doesn't violate your rights because they're not technically searching you. So let's talk about under United States, there's a, a Supreme Court case called United States versus Place. What happened was there, the Supreme Court in 1983, they ruled that the use of drug sniffing dogs in a public place, that's the key, needs to be in a public place, does not count as a search under the Fourth Amendment. So that's why you can see it in areas where the public is gathered, police are allowed to use drug dogs in those situations. Now, if the dog signals to the officers that illegal substances could potentially be present, the officers now can use that sniff, that alert by the dog, as a basis to establish probable cause. So now the officer will have probable cause under the law to do a search of the person or property. Now here's, it's critical though, that's limited to the area that it was sniffed, right? The dog has to alert to that area and that, that kind of leads into that. So just because a dog were to alert to a car doesn't mean you get the officers get to go search a house, right? No, one doesn't necessarily lead to the other. So it's a totally different story if you're talking about private property. So with drug dogs, you need to break down the analysis into two parts. Is it public property or is it private property? Public property, it's not even a search. And that's what this United States, this uh, US Supreme Court case ruled back in 1983. Not even a search, so it is legal, all right? If it's private, private property, totally different story. Now, if the officers ever tried to come into someone's residence or into a building without a warrant, or even into a, potentially someone's person just walking up to them and doing this, it's a little bit different story if it's on private property, okay? Now, what about traffic stops? One of the most common areas where you'll see the police employ drug dogs is at a traffic stop. Well, we have a case that covers that. There's the Rodriguez case where if you, let's say you get pulled over, all of a sudden maybe you were pulled over for running a red light, hypothetically, right? Well, now all of a sudden you're under investigation for potential possession of drugs. Now, narcotics officers do this all the time they'll set up this situation where they look for someone to try to leave a drug house, a known drug house. They'll wait for someone to pull off from that known drug house, and then they'll look for any ticky-tack reason to pull them over, some small, small traffic violation, and they'll have the drug dogs ready to try to sniff around the vehicle, okay? So this still must be lawful, all right? Now here's the key when it comes to traffic stops. When you're trying to do the analysis to figure out is it lawful for a drug dog to be used, you have to consider the length of the stop, the length of the delay. How long is it taking the officers to get the drug dog to the scene to do the sniff? Big, big difference here. So now when we analyze this, that does not stop the officers from needing to have reasonable suspicion to pull you over, okay? There is no search, there is no drug dog involved if the officers did not have reasonable suspicion to stop you. So law enforcement officers, one of the areas you'll find in Texas where it's more frequent, they tend to, they tend to really patrol those areas from the Dallas-Fort Worth area all the way up through Colorado, 
if you know what I mean. They know people are coming back and forth from Colorado down to Texas and from Texas up to Colorado. They patrol that area very frequently and many times look to have drug dogs ready to be used, expecting to find someone coming from Colorado with something that might be illegal in Texas, okay? But I want you to understand, officers need, they must have uh, an initial reason to pull you over. Whatever that is, speeding, a broken taillight, uh, reckless driving, fair to use a turn signal, uh, all of those minor traffic violations can be a reason to get you pulled over and try to see if they can get a drug dog, okay? So if that's the case, if they pulled you over for no reason, they, it's, it could be thrown out potentially in court through a motion to suppress, all right? Now, law enforcement officers cannot detain you while bringing the dog. Now, what we find out in the case of Rodriguez versus, you, uh, versus the United States, the law officers did did have a reason to initially pull Rodriguez over. Uh, he had violated the law by driving on the shoulder of the highway. But after matters with the traffic offense were settled, I'm going to just give you a, a, a lowdown kind of what the case says. Officers then detained Rodriguez for seven to eight minutes in order to bring over a drug sniffing dog. By the way, Rodriguez made a very smart decision. He refused the search. So if an officer pulls you over, you have no responsibility to allow the officer to search a vehicle, no matter what he says, okay? You always have the right to refuse the search. That's what Rodriguez did. Then it took him over eight minutes to get the drug dog present. The dog then, of course, showed up, sniffed the area, discovered methamphetamines in the car, and Rodriguez was arrested on federal drug charges. Naturally, Rodriguez appealed the conviction. The Supreme Court then ruled that law officers cannot detain someone with reasonable suspicion that they have con without reasonable suspicion that they have obtained uh, some controlled substances in their vehicle. In other words, unless the officer, unless your police officer either smelled marijuana or had any other reason to believe that there had to be illegal substances in the vehicle, they cannot just hold you for an indeterminate amount of time until a drug dog shows up. Okay, they're just not permitted to do that. So another thing you say, well, what if those situations don't apply to me? What do I do? Well, let me tell you something, do Texas drug dogs, all of these drug dogs aren't always what they appear to be. And what I mean by that is sometimes people say, well, my vehicle was singled out and the dog alerted on it. And you know, what does that mean now? Am I, am, do I have any hope? Well, first of all, let me, let me help you understand these drug dogs are not always accurate. And we're going to talk about just generally how it can be a little subjective. Uh, Cleaning products, certain types of foods, and other odors have been known definitively to cause a drug dog to signal that controlled substances may be present, and then officers will act upon that. Recent studies have also shown that drugs or paraphernalia are only found about 44% of the time that dogs alert officers to the presence of alleged substances that are present. That means they're wrong more often than they're right under many of the studies that are out there. Also, there are some arguments that I know some people praise drug dogs that, um, that they'll help kind of reduce law enforcement bias in making decisions. But interestingly enough, and I thought this was kind of shocking, there was a study in Latino men, drug dogs were only accurate at detecting the presence of drugs or paraphernalia 27% of the time, which is kind of shocking, really. And there's been all these studies on drug dogs, and of course they're animals, and they're not always going to be 100% correct, but 27%. Now, we say, how is that possible? Is it really a problem with the dog? Or maybe it's an issue with the police? Well, that's kind of what we've learned, is that what happens is the officer's holding the, the, the canine and can cue the canine to alert. So what happens is it's easier for the officer to start saying, oh, I think there's something over here, right? And then they kind of cue the dog saying, look here. The dog gets excited. He takes that as something as being there. And all of a sudden, all reliability is out the window, okay? And I mean, 27%, yikes, that's, that's pretty rough. So what does this mean for you? Well, if drug sniffing dogs were used to give uh, police reasonable suspicion on your drug case, I think it's critical that you contact a local criminal defense attorney to make sure and help you take care and look into these matters to make sure your Fourth Amendment rights were not violated in how the police handled the situation. It may be determined that further investigation may reveal that the dog made a mistake. The law officers potentially could have cued the dog to try to strike in a particular area. And if you can show that it was not reliable and those cues were a part of this process, you no longer have reliable probable cause. And that's critical in your case. 
So it's entirely possible that your entire case could be thrown out due to the uh, actions of either the police or the use of a drug dog in your case. All right, now, if you're facing a drug crime and maybe drug dogs were used in your situation and you have some questions, don't hesitate to contact the Fulgham Law Firm at 817-877-3030. Now, I promised you if you waited around to the end of this video, I would also give you a free ebook, What to Do If You've Been Charged With a Drug Crime in Texas. Click the link below. We'll be happy to send it right over to you. Thanks again for joining us here today. Look forward to our next video series. And if you like what you heard, subscribe to our channel. We'll be happy to send you more content. Take care.